In today's video, I'm gonna explain every single Atlanta neighborhood to you, and that's coming up right now. Hey everyone, this YouTube channel is all about helping you get to know what it's like to live in the Atlanta area. And I thought, what better way to help you get to know the area than to pull up a map and literally give you some brief thoughts on every single Atlanta neighborhood. So let's not waste any time, let's get right into it. I'm pulling up a map of Atlanta and I'm gonna give you a brief description of each neighborhood. By the way, my name is Mark, I'm a local realtor here. And if you and your family are looking to relocate to the Atlanta area and need to purchase a home, you can work with me. Please schedule a Zoom call using the Calendly link in the description below or call me, email me, whatever you wanna do, but I love when my viewers become clients. All right, so I have a map of Atlanta pulled up. There's two things you need to know before we dive into this. Number one, I will be talking about neighborhoods that are not technically in the city of Atlanta. Usually people who live here use the perimeter of I-285 to denote being in town or out of town in the suburbs. So just keep in mind as we're going through these neighborhoods, some are in DeKalb County, unincorporated DeKalb, some are city in their own right. This is for more practical purposes, not literal purposes, because the practicalities of living here, you'll need to know more than just what's in the city of Atlanta. The second thing I want to say is that Atlanta in particular is very micro, meaning you cannot judge an entire book by its cover when it comes to neighborhoods. This is something that investors do. They like to give neighborhoods a grade. In Atlanta, things change rapidly from street to street. So when I'm talking about some neighborhoods that for whatever reason have higher crime statistics um, or areas that I personally wouldn't feel comfortable living in, that does not mean you should cross it off the list. I have found plenty of amazing pockets of areas inside neighborhoods that many others wouldn't feel comfortable living in. So I am gonna be speaking in generalities. Please keep that in mind. These are not blanket statements. You really need to have boots on the ground, either yourself or your agent, giving you real-time information about the exact street that you're looking at. So that with that being said, let's get into explaining every Atlanta neighborhood. Why don't we start from the top down? We have the perimeter here, okay? And so this is what we're gonna be covering. You see the actual city of Atlanta and you see the perimeter. Now, for whatever reason, typically, the north side of town uh, is more affluent, has more money, economy, better schools, and is more desirable. So let's start off up top with Brookhaven. So uh, Brookhaven is an extremely desirable area, high end, um, good option for people who maybe are a little priced at a buckhead, uh, great part of town, safe, uh, very trafficy in this area, MARTA connectivity, which is very convenient. Not super walkable, but lots of great shopping. Uh, there is historic, you know, Brookhaven, which is very expensive and desirable. It's a beautiful area. Oglethorpe University is over here. So uh, Brookhaven, North Brookhaven, extremely desirable areas. Of course, the convenience here is that you're on the north side of town. You have a head start if you need to head up north. You're still not far from Midtown. You're still not far from the airport. So, and you're also close to a lot of great food. That's what else I'll say about Brookhaven. Close to um, Buford Highway, which is my personal favorite place to eat. So uh, there's a lot of great cheap eats if you're living in the Brookhaven area. We'll go clockwise here. So let's do Shambly and Doraville. Uh, these are fairly similar areas. These are some of the fastest growing neighborhoods in the Atlanta area. A lot of development going on here. I love these areas because of Buford Highway. Okay, there's incredible affordable ethnic food, particularly Asian and Latin American uh, all in Doraville and Chambly. So if you're a foodie, this is a great place to be. There's also really good affordability, right? The adjacent areas are very expensive. Chambly and Doraville, a little bit uh, less so. A little bit more dense. You're seeing more, you know, apartment condo buildings be, be built up here, a little bit less so in the single family side. The DeKalb Peach Street Airport's nearby. I don't know how that how relevant that would be for anyone, but um, great area. I actually uh, just help a couple get under contract um, with a townhome in Doraville. It was in the mid twos, right? It was not super upgraded, but it was livable. It was a nice community. So Good affordability, especially if you're willing to be in an attached option in this area. By the way, I have no idea how long this video is gonna be because I'm gonna speak for minutes about some areas and a few seconds about others. So hopefully I don't run on too long. 
Okay, so as we go east and go clockwise down south, uh, we're going to go Ashford Park, Brookhaven, really desirable area, um, you know, pretty similar to Brookhaven. Uh, but this whole section, this is, this entire area is not an area where you're going to need to be worried about safety. Schools tend to be pretty good and uh, just a very desirable area. Good shopping, good lifestyle, very desirable area all around here. There's just going to be different gradients of affordability. Typically, you get a little bit more affordable as we're heading east. Um, so let's see what else we have. All right, so Embry Hills. I uh, haven't spent a lot of time in that area, honestly. Um, nice area, though. As we go south into North Lake, typically it gets a little bit more of a mixed bag, especially if you're outside the perimeter. A little bit more affordability uh, as we go over to this area, kind of the Tucker area, which I will do a whole video about the surrounding suburbs soon, so look out for that. But um, decent affordability in this area in general. I would say, you know, you're going to need a budget starting in the low 400s to get a uh, move-in ready home. Um, but this is a good value here because the, the prices aren't quite as expensive as the areas that we were just talking about, like Brookhaven. All these areas could work. I mean, you're on the east side of town. For those of you looking to work at Emory, this is going to be an easy commute south. Yeah, you know, great, great area. I mean, I don't know much more to say about it. North Lake, we just talked about that. So as we move into like Briarcliff Woods, Oak Grove Acres, Sagamore Hills, down into North Druid Hills, again, uh, these are expensive areas. These are areas where you're probably gonna need for a detached home a budget. In the high fours, probably at least in the $500,000 range. North Druid Hills, great area. I've worked in that area a lot. Uh, large Jewish population there. Uh, a lot of Hasidic Jews you'll see walking around all the time. So I know that will be important for some people. Not super dense. Again, the, the city in general is not dense, but you don't have a ton of walkable, dense areas over here. The traffic is pretty treacherous in the North Druid Hills area. But uh, as we have this whole area uh, pictured on my screen here, so, you know, and I have to tie in other neighborhoods kind of at the same time to give context, but the most expensive areas to live in Atlanta is gonna be this Tuxedo Park area, is literally the most expensive, desirable place to live. Multi-billion dollar homes, private security, this is where some of the richest people in Atlanta live. So really, this is all Buckhead, okay? All these neighborhoods, uh, Buckhead, Buckhead Village, Tuxedo Park, East Chastain Park, West Page. Cases. These are all neighborhoods of Buckhead. So just Buckhead in general, you've probably heard about it. It's a huge commercial and shopping kind of mecca for people. Lenox Mall, Phipps Plaza, a lot of businesses are headquartered here. So very desirable, glitzy area of Atlanta. It's been referred to as the Beverly Hills of the South. So if you're wondering where that kind of swanky, bougie, high-end area is, it's going to be Buckhead and the surrounding areas. That's going to cover a lot of the neighborhoods we're looking at today. So as you gradually head east, you get a little bit more affordability. You get a little bit closer to Emory. As you move east, things get a little bit more sprawled out, a little bit less dense. You get larger lots. You get a little bit more value for your money, and all of that is still close by. Great areas, really very desirable areas. All these areas that we're covering so far, you're not going to have to really worry at all about safety. Uh, typically, the schools are pretty good. There's lots of good private and charter school options. So you know, we just kind of covered, and granted, I'm doing this all on the fly here, we just kind of covered most of Buckhead. I mean, Peachtree Hills, Lindbergh, Buckhead Village, it, it's all kind of Buckhead, and it has different um, variations, different um, pros based on maybe how close you are to Piedmont Park or the Beltline. So where you would particularly look at is gonna come down to your budget and the size requirements, but needless to say, these are all pretty expensive areas. So just to give you a little bit more context, I mean, you know, we're talking in this whole Buckhead area, at least in the sixes for a starter home, probably higher. I mean, it's mostly multi-million dollar homes. You can probably find something decent in the seven to $900,000 range, but probably better than decent. Maybe I'm selling it short a little bit. As we head east into, you know, the North Druid Hills east side area, again, you can probably get into many of these neighborhoods in the high 400s, but your five to 700 range is gonna be the sweet spot for most of the neighborhoods that we're talking about uh, on the east side over here until we start traveling south a little bit, all right? So we'll stay, we'll kind of use this 7585 connector here as our middle point to move clockwise around. Again, Piedmont Heights, Morningside Lennox Park, 
super desirable expensive areas you can see we've got piedmont park right here atlanta botanical garden going into midtown midtown is one of the most desirable areas to live in atlanta commercial arts district there's more things and amenities to do in midtown than probably anywhere else in the city so this is a great place to stay if you're visiting um you're going to want to go to the high museum you're going to want to walk on the belt line you're going to want to go to the fox theater go to a nice restaurant so Midtown is more dense, so if you want a single family detached home in Midtown, I mean, it's probably gonna be at least in the high 700s, if not 800s. Great option though, and all these options, remember, have attached affordability. If you're okay with being an apartment, condo, or townhome, you can live in all these areas at a much more reasonable budget than if you need a single family detached home. So Midtown, we know about Midtown, large gay population here. I know that's important uh, for some people. So that would be an area where I think you'd feel right at home and very accepted. And I think the whole city of Atlanta, I don't think you're gonna have any issues feeling accepted, but I will point that out there. So that's Midtown. You know, we talked about Druid Hills. Okay, Decatur. So city of Decatur, you've heard me talk about this all the time. Technically a suburb of Atlanta, but as you can see, I mean, you're literally a 15 minute drive to downtown Atlanta. So it is definitely worth talking about for our purposes today. City of Decatur is one of the only areas inside the perimeter with really good public schools, highly rated. And for that reason, it's very desirable. And a lot of people wanna live here. Not only does it have good public schools, it's got a great dense walkable downtown area. It's a great vibe. Some of the best restaurants in the city are here. And this is one of the more walkable areas. So the closer you are, to downtown Decatur, the more expensive the homes are gonna be. It gets more dense here, so you're probably gonna be looking at attached options. So most places in unincorporated DeKalb will have a Decatur address but are not in the city of Decatur. So you're not getting those high quality public schools and the high end public works in your area. All right, so city of Decatur is here. So you might live in Belvedere Park with a Decatur address, but it's not city of Decatur and you're not getting a lot of the benefits that go along with being in the city of Decatur. So I know in a park, College Heights, Oakhurst, really desirable areas, um, great vibe, very family oriented, a lot of dense walkable areas all throughout here, great public schools. If you want to be really in town, but you have a family that you want to raise, this is probably the first spot I would look at. All right, so that's Decatur. Let's go west a little bit. So mostly these are fantastic high-end neighborhoods. I mean, Lake Claire, very expensive and desirable, a little bit more quiet, but still being super in town, obviously. Kirkwood, extremely popular, you know, has really come up in the last five to seven years. A lot of development on Memorial Drive. Kirkwood's a very kind of hip, desirable place for younger people to live. There's plenty of families there too. Now, as we go east, Obviously, it's gonna get a little bit more city living, a little bit more dense. So Edgewood, uh, you know, growing quite a bit, popular place, uh, a lot of shopping over there. El Tesor, that's a good restaurant. Cabbage Town, Reynolds Town. Again, all the development along Memorial Drive is really changing these areas. Great in-town neighborhoods to live at. Definitely gonna be more on the expensive side to live here. These are the desirable in-town neighborhoods. So you're gonna need a budget probably you know, in the high 400s, if not more, depending on if you're looking for an attached or detached option. Inman Park, probably one of the most desirable in-town neighborhoods in general. A lot of walkability and Beltline connectivity. All right, so here is the Beltline, and this is very important for you to be aware of because it's probably the most popular amenity in Atlanta. All the neighborhoods, that the Beltline runs through have skyrocketed in value and will continue to do so. So if you're serious about buying real estate in Atlanta, you should go on Beltline.org and familiarize yourself with where this is. It's a series of walking trails. It's connected neighborhoods in a way that they were not previously connected. Former 27 mile railway corridor that has been ripped up and paved over. So be aware of the Beltline. So yeah, all these neighborhoods, super desirable. It does become a different story on the other side of 85, which we're gonna talk about as we loop around Old Fourth Ward, Martin Luther King Jr. National Historic Site. Uh, that is where he grew up and lived for a period of time. Kind of a lot of nightlife over in the Old Fourth Ward area in addition to the historical center. Again, very desirable area, uh, very expensive area, as is Cabbage Town. As we go south, we move into my hood, uh, south of I-20. Still great places to live. Summerhill Grant Park, Peoplestown, which is where I live. These are kind of sister neighborhoods in a way. Grant Park is my favorite 
park in the city, heavily wooded and gorgeous, expensive area. Um, you're going to need a budget in the 400s to get a two bedroom home. Most of the homes, you know, are going to be in the six to $800,000 range in here. You get a little bit more affordability with Summerhill. Georgia State University has set up shot where the Braves used to play. This area is changing like crazy. Great spot to get in now if you want to get ahead of a future event. I mean, it already is a great neighborhood, but you know, you can still get in here in the four to fives and that's not going to be the case in a few years same thing with people's town it's gonna you're gonna be in the fours at this point purchasing here but it's a good option if you can't quite afford grant park but you want to enjoy grant park and all the things that are in this area so these are all great neighborhoods uh ormwood park again good value if you can't be in grant park still a great neighborhood still close to these areas same thing with boulevard heights chosewood park there's a penitentiary over here not a big deal still a pretty desirable area uh, Woodland Hills. These are all great neighborhoods. If you're a little bit priced out of Grant Park and Cabbage Town, you're a little bit further south. You have a little bit more affordability and they're still great neighborhoods. So keeping going east. So you have East Atlanta Village, East Atlanta. East Atlanta Village is known for a lot of popular nightlife, a little bit more dense walkable area, a little bit more petty crime here. Uh, you know, don't walk to your car at night from a club here. Don't leave stuff in your car. That goes for all over Atlanta. So as we head east down Memorial, I, it gets a little less dense. It opens up and you get more affordability. Uh, east Lake Golf Club is a PGA Tour golf club. So very desirable, but this area Area does continue to gentrify, especially as we head over to Belvedere Park. A little bit of a mixed bag. Good value here, I would stay, say. You could still get in here in some cases to high threes, low fours. You're super close to City of Decatur. You're super close to downtown. Nothing is far from you here, and you're kind of equidistant from things like Buckhead and the airport because you're on that equator line, so to speak. So I actually like uh, being on the east or west side of town for that reason. I already described Belvedere Park. As we get over to Mountain Brook, Mountain Brook is kind of sneaky. There's actually, if you need a larger home with like a two or three car garage, Mountain Brook could could actually work for you. Not a lot of people know about it. Not a lot of homes come up for sale here, but good value and, and very different homes in terms of style than what you'll typically see. More of a suburban vibe just in terms of the architecture. Now, as we head south, things just become more of a mixed bag. Candler McAfee, I, I think it's a completely fine place to live. Good value here. Same thing with Gresham Park. You move down into Panthersville. These are traditionally, it becomes a little bit more lower income as you head south. It does technically become higher crime. I do not think you should necessarily cross it off your list. These are great options if you want to be in town. Maybe you have a budget in the 300s, low fours. You want a little bit more space. You want to be a little bit further from your neighbors. You want a larger lot of land. These could work really well. It's a mixed bag. You got to go look at the street, how the homes are maintained, and do your own research. As we swing around going west here, Gresham Park, a little bit of a mixed bag. I think there's good value here. As we go directly south of Atlanta, once you cross over the railroad tracks here in Peoplestown into South Atlanta, it can get a little bit more dicey in some areas. You got to be more intentional about what street you're on. It's coming up. It's getting there. It's improving, but there is technically a little bit higher crime. I mean, Lakewood Heights is great. At Lakewood Amphitheater, you know, there's a lot to love about these areas. As you get down into Polar Rock, Browns Mill Park, Rosedale Heights, Lakewood, there's definitely uh, statistically some higher crime in these areas. Doesn't mean you can't find a great place to live. You know, Glen Rose Heights, Orchard Knob, South River Gardens. These are areas that, you know, if you're on a much lower budget, you know, if you're trying to purchase in the low threes or high twos, you're probably going to have to look at somewhere like this. Now, as we continue to swing around, this video is already, I know, going to be way longer than I wanted it to be. But as we continue to swing around from east to west, we get into the Tri-Cities, which you've heard me talk about for Hapeville, City of the Arts, East Point, Marta Connectivity, College Park, Marta Connectivity as well. Historic College Park. There's multi-million dollar homes in Historic College Park. I love the Tri-Cities. There's a ton of economic development here. I love the architecture. 100 plus year old homes. Way more uh, character than homes you'll find, especially in the suburbs with the cookie cutter homes. So if you like 100 year old, all brick, pine, wood floors, 12 foot ceilings, fireplaces in every room. Now, they're not always well maintained. If you can find one, it's a real gem, but of course, Hartsfield Jackson Airport is right here, okay? So, you know, that's extremely convenient. I know a lot of people work for Delta or work at the airport. That's gonna be incredibly convenient if you travel a lot. So I love the Tri-Cities. Great place to purchase real estate 
especially now. Now, as you head a little bit west of that, this is unfortunately one of the pockets, I would say, you know, Greenbrier, Meadow Lake Estates, Colonial Homes, Campbellton Road. Fort McPherson's not even a place you can live. Tyler Perry owns that. That's where Tyler Perry Studios is. Adams Park, Venetian Hills, right up to, I would say, Oakland City. Oakland City is changing tremendously because the Beltline is right here. But, you know, all these areas, on well, I shouldn't have put the Tri-Cities in it. This is just, you really got to do your research. That's all I'm saying about these areas. I'm not discouraging you from living here. I'm just telling you statistically, they're slightly higher crime. In many instances, unfortunately, they are food deserts. So there's not a great easy access to grocery stores. So statistically, a little bit higher crime, lower income areas. You just, again, it's all about going to the street, seeing how the homes are maintained, going at different times of the day, speaking to the neighbors, and seeing if you feel comfortable with you and your family living there. But traditionally speaking, and again, let's just back up and go broad strokes here. A lot of the money and desirability is north and east, and a lot of some of the rougher areas tend to be west and south. Again, that's broad strokes, and I'll say it again, Atlanta is very micro. All right, so diving back in here, I don't wanna miss some of these neighborhoods directly to the south. So again, I talked to you about Summer Hill, Grant Park, and Peoplestown, and all these neighborhoods, we talked about that. Polar Rock, Mixed Bag, lower home prices here. Let's see, Sylvan Hills is right there. A lot of good value there. I would definitely be looking at that. Capital View and Capital View Manor, I love a lot. You can see the Beltline is right here, okay? That's why you need to pay attention to where the Beltline is. Beautiful historic homes in these areas, very desirable. I think it's a great time to get in. Won't break the bank yet. You'll probably be in the 400s, but really love Capital View Manor, and I do also like Capital View. All right, so let's make sure we don't miss too much here. I described most of these neighborhoods. Um, you just, you know, all through here, Venetian Hills, again, it's gonna, you know, probably change a lot of, because of how in town it is. But what happens is, and I would say all these neighborhoods, unfortunately, higher crime areas typically, lower income areas, but that changes right here from Oakland City. You see the Beltline here, and that is impacting all these West Side neighborhoods quite a bit. So you have the Beltline running here. You have a lot of development, desirable places to live here. Again, the projections here in 10 years, it's going to be much closer to Inman Park. So if I could purchase real estate anywhere in the city, it would be on the west side of Atlanta, West End. Uh, again, gorgeous homes, very similar to the Tri-Cities to the south. Incredible architecture here, good value, a little bit of a mixed bag. If you're not have a good tolerance for city living, you know, that might not be the area for you, but love the West End, Mosley Park, Ashview Heights. You know, obviously Georgia Tech is over here. A lot of the HBCUs are over here, Clark Atlanta University, uh, Morehouse. So these are really historic neighborhoods. Um, you know, there's a lot of history here, a lot of history with the civil rights movement. I think these are great places to live with good value close to the Beltline. I would live anywhere from Westland to Westlake. You know, once you get past Joseph E. Boone, you get into Bankhead and English Avenue, which are traditionally some of the highest crime areas inside the perimeter. That is changing quite a bit because of Mercedes-Benz Stadium, all the tourism and just, you know, Georgia Tech is right here. So the Georgia Aquarium is right here. So this is an area right now that's high crime, but it's, it's a dichotomy. It's a total dichotomy. You have poverty and crime, which is incredibly unfortunate. And you have a lot of new shiny objects here, which it's pretty wild to see. So, so you know, will, will we go right here. If I want to break this up a little bit, we've got Home Park, which is like a, a college town. This is where all the kids at Georgia Tech live, Atlantic Station, big shopping area, very popular swanky area. That's a nice place. Um, if you're if you're into kind of that vibe, if you want to live in a high rise and be close to shopping, Atlantic Station could be a good option. Georgia Tech, obviously, that's the university, Home Park. Knight Park Howell Station is actually a really desirable area, very desirable. This West Side Reservoir Park, you know, Atlanta's West Side Park is really gonna change things. It's the largest park in the city. It's not completely open yet. Gorgeous Park, that's gonna impact Grove Park quite a bit. Love Westlake, you know, Collier Heights, Center Hill, Harville Homes, it's a mixed bag. It does get a little bit higher crime and a little dicier as you head west here. But what's crazy is, you know, just over here, as you get north, you get into like the Vinings area, it gets super swanky. And I'm jumping around here a little bit because the adjacent areas provide context, but you have Vinings up here, which is one of the most expensive, desirable areas to live in the city. Very desirable area. 
uh, Truist Park. This is where the Braves play. You see you're right on the perimeter here. So Vinings, River Oaks Estates, Mount Perrin, Northside. These are Buckhead neighborhoods, okay? So we're moving into Buckhead here. And then the other side, of, we already talked about Buckhead. So you already know about this is all Buckhead basically until you get into Midtown. So, you know, Vinings, incredibly desirable area. Pace is one of the most expensive areas to live in the city. So Atlanta is so micro. You have extremely nice areas close to not so nice or developed areas. Pace is incredibly expensive. Margaret Mitchell, Underwood Hills, Bolton. To this right here, I think this is a rail yard. Um, this is kind of like, yeah, NS Inman Yard. This is all like real kind of high end expensive to Night Park Howell Station. And then, you know, from this Buckhead all the way over here and this, this is just uh, actually some of these areas are, are, are pretty nice. Um, but Collier Heights is where it definitely gets a little bit dicier. So this is kind of like, you know, it, it, it blends into one another here. Again, you just got to go to the area. But as we head south, again, Harlan Terrace, Florida Heights, um, Florida Heights, not so bad. Dixie Hills was on my number one list of Atlanta's most dangerous neighborhoods. You know, it's very unfortunate, but if you drive through Dixie Hills, it's just gonna be a, a ton of abandoned apartment buildings. It's really hard to believe, but I really like Westlake. You've got tons of 60s and 70s homes, a lot of great character, Beltline connectivity. So you really, you really need someone who knows these areas to kind of guide you on this. Almost feel like I covered nearly everything. I know I didn't hone on on every technical neighborhood per se, but I think I covered the broad strokes pretty good. So let's just go through this again. You know, this is all Buckhead. This is all like kind of swanky, high end, secluded, desirable areas, close to good shopping, multi-million dollar homes. That's what you're getting all in around here. As we go east, again, good ethnic food, cheap eats, Buford Highway, Brookhaven, desirable, little less expensive than Buckhead. As you head south, you know, you go into the Druid Hills area. Again, desirable area, not quite as expensive, very trafficy. You head south into Decatur, incredible area for families, you know, and then as you uh, go to eat, I love Scottsdale. Okay, great affordability here, pretty safe area, easy access to downtown Decatur. I'm a big fan of Scottsdale and Avondale Estates. You've heard me talk about these areas before. As you, you know, cross over here into Belvedere Park and Candler McAfee, it just, it comes a lower economic area. It's a little bit more of a mixed bag. Great option for people who are a more uh, on a lower budget, but want less density, a larger lot. East Lake Terrace is really coming up. Talked about Gresham Park, Panthersville. All kind of the hot in-town neighborhoods are right around here. Inman Park, East Atlanta Village, Grant Park, Cabbage Town, Old Fourth Ward. These are like... I'm young, I wanna be in town, I've got money, or you know, many people are renting, so you, maybe you don't need that much money, but very, you know, little five points is known for, you know, being very kind of uh, out there and diverse and kind of a funky place to go. And there's a little walkable area with some good bars and shopping over in little five points. You know, you get into the touristy section as you're closer to downtown, Georgia Aquarium, World of Coke, State Farm Arena where the Hawks play. So a little bit of a touristy zone here. Mercedes-Benz, as you go west, Vine City, English Avenue, Bankhead, unfortunately, some of the highest crime areas in the city. Now we're going like West Side, which you hear me talk about all the time, the West End, the Beltline, it's all being built up over here. I love these neighborhoods. That's where I would purchase real estate. You've got some really cool Atlanta neighborhoods just south of I-20. This is the section of town that I live in, a little bit less expensive than an Inman Park area, but really in town, I love this area. All these neighborhoods are great. As you go south a little bit, again, it becomes more of a mixed bag, crossing into historic South Atlanta, Lakewood Heights, Polar Rock, Browns Mill Park, Peekerson. We talked, I love the Tri-Cities. You know I love the Tri-Cities. Uh, they're really kind of different than this whole other area. West side, unfortunately, all this area, you just, I'm not telling you don't move there. If you're on a lower budget, you need to be in town. Any of these areas could work. It comes down to your tolerance for city living. It comes down to how many abandoned ho homes are in the area. If you're seeing drug activity and you make your best decision for you, but I'm just telling you broad strokes, it is technically a lower income, higher crime area. And that continues as you head north until you, you know, get over into like, Brookview Heights, 
Monroe Heights, and then going into Vinings, where it gets very swanky and expensive again. Okay, so uh, that's why a lot of people divide north of 20 from south of 20, even though I live south of 20 and there's great neighborhoods here. But, you know, there's a lot of money and desirability in these areas, and this is just a little bit more of a mixed bag. So there you have it. I feel like I talked for an hour. I'm sure I skipped over some neighborhoods. I'm sure I said some things wrong. I think I gave you a better idea of the neighborhoods in the Atlanta area. It's hard to do, okay? It's hard to do. Atlanta is very micro. Things change from street to street. You cannot judge a book by its cover. Everyone has a different tolerance for city living. Some people think the neighborhood that I live in is just incredibly dangerous and they would never live there. I've never had an incident there. It's a very expensive, desirable area now at this point. So everyone is coming from a different place in life, a different perspective. I think I gave you a little, I think I helped increase your knowledge a little bit, which is my main goal. If I get a good response to this video, if you want to see it, I will do the surrounding suburbs. We'll talk about all the uh, neighborhoods. Again, they're not all technically suburbs. They could be exurbs. They could be cities in their own right. But uh, I use the terms very broadly for people looking to live just outside the city of Atlanta. I can do a video of all these surrounding neighborhoods to give you an idea. So let me know if you want to see that. I really hope I helped you in your journey, increase your info, give you more confidence. This is a great city. One of the biggest challenges of helping people buy a home in Atlanta is that there are so many places that could work for them. Okay, so we have to narrow it down based on what's most important to you. So hopefully I helped you do that. Thank you so much for watching. If you do want to work together, just book a call with me. Call me up, email me, or book a Zoom call with me, whatever you want to do. I love working with my viewers. I've done it many times now. You can check out my Google reviews, Living in Atlanta team. I hope to hear from you. And until my next video, I'll see you next time.